Happy New Year, everyone, and welcome back to Lacrosse Link. Make sure you're catching us every week at 8 p.m. on Thursday nights on LAC Sports Network. And we're also available archived in a tray on the LSN website. And you can find us on YouTube on the Lacrosse Link page and go to lacrosselink.com. I am your host, Stephen Stamp, and very pleased to have you with us here for the first episode of the new year, where we have Dylan LaPrade, who is a veteran of the Arena Lacrosse League East Division, having played all four seasons with the St. Catharines Shockwave. He is now playing in the Arena Lacrosse League West. So some very interesting conversation about those two leagues and his journey from one to the other. And then we talked to Dan Labusser, the head coach of the New York Riptide, Always fun to have Laddie on. Always great to catch up and chat and talk about the challenges of coming back after a month off with a team that is still pretty new and trying to pull that team together. They feel good about where they're heading and they're excited, of course, to get back on the floor, as we all are, with the NLL season resuming. And we're pleased to have you with us here on Lacrosse Link, your link to all things lacrosse. And make sure after the interviews, you stick around because Ryan Banesh was traded this week. So we have an, an, a rundown that is all Benny all the time here on Lacrosse Link, your link to all things lacrosse. Beautiful play, Aaron Gray. He is having it himself a tournament. The save regardless of the crease call and that shows he is at his acrobatic In the middle it just bounces off but it's picked up and scores and this is ticket talking minds for the biggest that's a comma and a comma gotta get it get it and this is ticket talking minds for the biggest that's a comma and a comma and a comma gotta get it Joining me on a lacrosse link now from the Shooting Eagles of Arena League West, but a four-year member of the St. Catharines Shockwave of the original Arena Lacrosse League is Dylan LaPrade. Welcome to the show. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephen, for having me. I'm uh, excited to be here. Really uh, excited. And, you know, I've been, I've been looking through the Arena League West scores and schedule and seeing how things are going. And a few names jumped out at me of guys who had played in the Ontario-based division who are now in the West. And I just think it's going to be really fascinating to compare and contrast a bit. And you played 49 games in four years with the St. Catharines Shockwave, won a championship, and uh, now you've made your way out to the West Coast, as so many of us do. I did back when I was rowing, went for Olympic trials. What was your journey to get you out to the Victoria area on Vancouver Island? Yeah, so um, this summer I did about a two and a half month trip across Canada. Um, which evidently led me to the island and uh, I stayed out there for a month um, before going home and kind of liquidating everything and mo moving fully out in September. Um, so, you know, it's one of the best places in the world from my uh, perspective and, uh, you know, I'm taking every advantage of uh, being able to live here right now. So it's been awesome. Great spot. I mean, my wife is from there, originally Northern Ireland, but spent a lot of time in Victoria and moved here to be with me. So I really appreciate that. Uh, eternally grateful for her making that decision. But uh, we love getting back out, you know, walking down Dallas Road, going to the Beacon Hill Petting Farm. Um, probably not open now, but, uh, you know, there's so many things to do out there. I know you're uh, finding your, your spots in the town. Um, I want to talk about the, uh, the league because I think it's really interesting to see, you know, yourself having played so many games in the Ontario version with the Shockwave and winning a championship, and now you're in BC. And I'm curious about the similarities and the differences because the Ontario League, or the East Division is now called, um, basically had four years to sort things out. And I'm curious if the BC League is kind of at a similar spot to where the Ontario League was when it started, both in terms of the way the game's presented and the game itself, or if it's really been able to build on what the Ontario, the East Division has done and kind of stand on the shoulders to, to move on. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I was blown away when we had our first weekend. Um, you know, the Langley Events uh, Centre is a beautiful uh, location and, um, you know, they handle everything from our jerseys, of uh, cleaning our jerseys down to, uh, you know, the media and, you know, everything. Um, it's a beautiful arena, you know, it showcases lots of, uh, lots of opportunity for players, you know, with great sized rooms to, you know, everything, um, you know, and I, I really appreciate all that because, you know, it sets a standard for, you know, what the ALL West um, is, you know, putting out and, uh, you know, it sets a standard for all the rest of the leagues, you know, within lacrosse in general. 
And they did such a good job at the 2019 World Championship at the event center and the field house. Um, just really professionally run uh, the broadcasting, the, the media. Uh, Gary Ahuja deserves a shout out. He's been sending out the news releases, yep. uh, helped me connect with you. Um, he's just, he's been terrific. And they just do a, such a job of, good job of all the things around the game to let you guys go play. A hundred percent. And, uh, you know, as a player that makes it that more exciting and, uh, you know, that more appreciative to play the game. Um, because, you know, when you have music for warmups, when you have all this uh, media and write-ups around your games, you know, you get a little bit of a sense of pride and a little bit of a sense of excitement to, you know, show up to the arena. Um, and, uh, you know, it seems like a lot of people care about our, our league out here and, um, you know, our, our stands are usually packed for our games, which is amazing to see. And, uh, you know, the players definitely feel the support and we definitely appreciate it. What about the game itself? I mean, you're a, a two-way defender. I feel, I feel like a solid D guy who uh, you scored 59 points in 49 career ALL East games. You're a better point of game guy in the West so far in your first three games of the season. Um, so you've, you've, you play a real transition role. I'm curious how you see the game itself for the, the teams you've been on and playing against. Yeah, I think, um, you know, our, our team, first off, I want to say our team is an awesome team. That's what we are. We're a family. Uh, from Adam, our head coach, down to our last guy, uh, you know, that's, you know, getting scratched on any given night. Um, I really enjoy a lot of that, those factors because, you know, again, it's the surrounding supporting cast that kind of um, influences that as well as then it kind of influences the play. Um, and, you know, we've only had three games this uh, this year so far, and, you know, each team has kind of, almost created an identity that, um, you know, is really interesting to see um, because they are different from one another. Um, but uh, yeah, the East to the West, you know, a little bit differences within the game. Um, you know, the East is a little bit more skilled, I would say, with a uh, better, you know, strategic passing. And the West is kind of, you know, uh, I'll bury my shoulder into you and go to the net and score on you, but still with that skill and passing um, as well as um, implemented in their game. So it's, it's a really unique uh, difference to see the West to the East um, and kind of compare them and then add kind of, you know, your own attributes that fit your game. What about the running game? Because obviously everybody wants to run, get transition goals, big part of your game. How do you see that being similar or different in the two leagues? Yeah, I think um, even just, you know, with the absence of lacrosse in general, I think um, just the IQ of getting off, you know, after an offensive shot's taken, um, or, you know, getting down the floor after an offensive shot's taken. Um, I think those are something that guys are kind of still getting their timing back with, um, which has created, you know, quite a bit of opportunity within transition um, so far in the first three games. But, uh, you know, if you got someone that can run transition, it's one of the hardest positions to stop. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an awesome uh, thing to see within our game. You open up the season, the Shooting Eagles – lose both of your first two games by one goal each to the Grizzlies and the Blackfish, um, who are the, you know, the top two teams in the standings, obviously at this point, and then you get your, the big win, a 13, six win in game three. How do you feel about the club going forward as you get to play the Grizzlies and Blackfish three more times each in the quadruple round Robin that is the all West season? Yeah, I think uh, the first two games, you know, we're, we're right there with them the whole game, you know, we're up for quite a bit of the game actually in both games. Um, and, uh, you know, I think our, we had some sloppy passes, sloppy play, uh, plays, you know, just with uh, playing with new guys, you know, getting back into, you know, playing again fully, um, you know, those little things that, you know, you can kind of tinker out and uh, kind of sharpen up on. Um, and, you know, evidently we ended up losing by one to both both teams. Um, but this uh, past weekend we played uh, the uh, Blackfish and, um, you know, from the start, you know, we were down two nothing within, you know, the first quarter and, you know, everyone was calm on the bench from our head coach down to, you know, our, our players. And, you know, that kind of says a lot about our team, you know, how poised and, you know, strong we are as a team. And, uh, you know, we ended up getting a nice run before the half and, you know, we were up and, you know, basically sealed the deal after that. I think we let one goal in per quarter and, you know, that just shows the strength of our offense and our defense is, you know, as well as Brody Harris, you know, he had a great game. So, if He's really more of, in games. Not very good yeah. in practice, really, right? He's not a practice goal. <laughs> Great game goalie, though. He's a gamer. 
Yeah. Well, I, I make sure to let them know whenever I do get a couple in on my practice. So hopefully it motivates them. <laughs> <laughs> and you talked about really being a team already, even though you're only a few, se- a few games into the season in the inaugural all West season. But one cool thing I think is, you know, there are you and a bunch of guys are on Vancouver Island. And for people who don't know it, it's a, it's a drive and an hour and a half ferry, hour and 35 minute ferry, depending which one you take to get over to the mainland. And then you've got to get to Langley. So you guys have some time to, to bond on route to games yeah exactly and that's that's what makes this whole experience even that much more uh, enjoyable um i was thinking about maybe moving over to vancouver and mainland uh for the season and you know i'm kind of happy i didn't because i've got to meet an amazing bunch of guys and uh you know for instance on uh sunday we couldn't get back over because there was uh, pretty bad weather out so we all got a hotel you know we had a little bit of uh team bonding i guess uh night uh you could call it you know went up for dinner and you know, it was just an awesome experience. It kind of turned, uh, I guess, you know, a sleepy night into a fun experience with your teammates, you know, that hopefully we we won't forget. So, uh, yeah, it's been amazing. Honestly, it's it's a really cool feeling. Really appreciate you coming on, Dylan LaPrade. Uh, wish you all the best in the Arena League and uh, looking forward to seeing you play some more lacrosse. Awesome. Thank you so much, Stephen, for having me on. Hi, this is Jaden with Al Anderson Source for Sports. Excited to tell you that we got all our new lacrosse product in for this upcoming season. Whether you're playing box or field, our lacrosse experts are going to make sure we get you into the right equipment to elevate your game. At Al Anderson Source for Sports, we know our stuff. Joining me on Lacrosse Link, the head coach of the New York Riptide, Dan Ladduser. Laddie, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Stanford. Good to see you. Really good to have you on, and uh, it was good to chat the other day, and I thought, hey, let's talk about this, because obviously a lot of challenges for everyone coming out of the uh, the, the enforced break that, uh, you know, COVID put onto the, the National Lacrosse League, and I know you guys are itching to get going, but what are the challenges as you get going again and, and prepare to start playing games once again? For us, one of the biggest challenges is just not being together, right? We're, we'll be a month before we've seen each other since our last game, which is a long stretch for such a, a young and new group. Um, so, I mean, I'm very grateful for our leadership group. Um, I think I, we talked off camera. They've been, they've been great instrumental as far as keeping the guys engaged. They're running fitness challenges to sort of keep up the competitive nature between the uh, players themselves. And we're doing lots of film work over zoom, uh, lots of conference calls, one-on-ones with the coaches. So we're doing everything that we can in a virtual world. Um, but it's not the same as being on the floor. It's not the same as being around the guys. So really looking forward to getting back. And one thing I think is everyone's facing the same challenges of being off the floor of having, having a gap and, and having to come back. But for your group, it seems like that's exacerbated a bit by the fact that you had some, some weeks off after you played the, the weekend doubleheader um, in the one week. And as a new team, you know, someone like you and new Rochester and Panther city, as a young team still finding cohesiveness coming together, it seems more important to be in person and have those opportunities. Yeah, it's tough because uh, those two weeks off early in the season is tough. And then add in that extra rescheduled game um, that sort of pushed us to this month window that we're in. Uh, and we do, we do have a very diverse group as far as, uh, you know, we have some guys with a lot of experience and some younger guys that are still sort of finding their way. And, and again, I say before, uh, you know, having the, the older guys around those young guys makes that transition a little bit smoother, right? And they have so much to offer. Um, and, and, you know, you know, as well as I do, when, when players learn from each other, it's way more effective than me standing in front of a whiteboard or anybody standing in front of a whiteboard. When you're learning from your peers, that's very effective. So we want to create that environment for them as much as we can. I guess the silver lining for you and the Riptide is Jeff T back, ready to roll from what I hear. And, uh, you know, he was like the first big name in the NLL that went into the COVID protocols and um, him having that time, but now being ready to go has to be a big boon for you guys. Yeah, for sure. Having him back, uh, back in the mix, back around the guys, um, not a, not an overly excitable person, right? When I talked to him about the COVID stuff, it was very low key. Yeah, I, I got it. I feel fine. Don't know what happened. Um, and then some great conversations about some film and that kind of stuff. So uh, it's not the same as having him around. Um, and again, that sort of 
laid, I call it laid back, but that sort of very calm and composed approach to the game is contagious. When, when people see it on the bench, here's one of the best in the world uh, and not frazzled, not panicked by anything that's going on. That, that sort of behavior is contagious. And that's what we want to create is a, a very calm, cool approach to the game. It's very systematic. And, and Jeff brings that in spades. So looking forward to get back. And obviously it helps for him having been around the game at a high level with his dad since he was, you know, three, four years old and being really comfortable in the situation. And I'm curious for your team as a whole, how, I mean, you come in, you know, new coach, first time head coach and all these challenges of this, this new type of season, but there, you know, I'm wondering what kind of window you've got or what the, the direction of the team is in terms of, you know, thinking, because it feels like you don't want to be thinking about, hey, what, how are we going to be the best team in five games? It's how are we going to be the best team over the next five years, for instance? Yeah, and I think, you know, we, we talked about that uh, when I was going through the process with Rich. We talked about what kind of window is it? What, what's the appetite for ownership as far as being patient and building something? And, and I can tell you the appetite's there. Um, this is not um, – there's no, no sense of panic in, in where we are and the, the start that we didn't want. Um, but at the same time, we, we just, we generally want to give you better. We want to have better results. And it's not a matter of someone looking down saying, Hey, you got to be better in these next three games. Nothing like that is going on. Um, that's just us. That's just us wanting to prove ourselves, prove that from a coaching perspective that, you know, we can, we can put together something that's going to be successful. And from a player's perspective to say, Hey, this is not the group from last year. This is a different group. And we want to, we want to make our own brand. Uh, and present that to the league. So that's that's what we're working on. Um, and every time we have a conversation, a coach's call, um, patience, if patience isn't brought up two or three times, um, then I'd be surprised. But we, we are taking a patient approach. Um, but again, that's it's not a patient with the, we don't really care. It's a patient that we're going to do this the right way, that we're going to build properly, and we're going to help people develop the way that they should develop. One aspect of the patient approach that got talked about a lot heading into the season, of course, was going with, with young, unproven goaltenders. And goaltending is a, an element of the game that seems to take longer. Goalies often will take longer to develop. Um, you go in with Orlam, with Stephen Orleman and Goa Abrams, who had barely had any actual playing time in the league. Lots of potential, lots of talent. Um, that, obviously, I imagine, is part of that approach of patience and develop those guys with the team. It's huge. Um, you know, we, we want to give those guys a look. So we want to be patient with them. They want to do well. They want to compete. And they work really hard with Angus Dinelli. They work hard on their film. Um, and the other, there's a ripple effect to that. So, you know, if you have a goaltender who's not quite as proven and, you know, you got a defense that's saying, ah, he probably maybe should have had that one. We have to have that patience as an entire unit. It can't just be, let's be patient with the goaltenders and playing the D when the, when the goaltenders are, are, you know, we can't do that. We have to be patient with the entire group. And that means D being patient with the goaltenders as well. Because, you know, they're going to have nights where they, you know, seven hole went in and they want that one back. Uh, we have to be patient with that and know that it's not about right now. It's about the near future. Mm -hmm. Angus Dinelli, I'm glad you brought him up because I think that's an interesting situation having him coaching. Um, you look at Stephen Orleman, we mentioned he was actually a, an arena lacrosse league all star as a very young goaltender. Angus Dinelli, there's a bit of a, a bridge there because Dinelli was the goalie of the year in Sealax and I got a bit of a shot in the NLL, didn't really play a whole lot, but was an amazing goaltender in Sealax and, and could play different styles. And I'm curious how he's coming on as a, as a goalie coach and how that whole situation is evolving. I, you know what? Like he has been absolutely amazing in, in my own fault. I haven't used him nearly as much as I should be. Like he texts me constantly. He says, Hey, what about this call? I want to be on the D calls. I want to know. I want to be involved. I want to be, I want to contribute. So, I mean, shame on me for not in, in, and, you know, Pat Jones as well for not using that resource as much as we should. And we, and we had in one of our meetings, we said, we got to make a better effort of making sure that Angus is in on everything because he has a lot to offer. I mean, he coaches a high level at St. Mike's as well, right? He, he knows the game. Um, I love his approach to goaltending as well. Very level headed, you know, that one's behind you. Let's move on to the next. Um, Bob Watson-esque in his approach of trying not to let things phase him. I don't know that anyone's ever been as good as Bob at that, but um, I love that sort of approach and the mentality, especially for a young goaler, goalie coming into this league. You know, you have to be able to turn the page quickly on these goals. As we uh, get close to wrapping up, what are you most looking forward to or most seeing as a challenge that you're, you're looking to take on as you get back onto the floor after that month break? 
been looking forward to, and I want the challenge of consistency. I'm looking forward to having consistent weekends, consistent practices, um, consistent film sessions. Um, this broken part is very difficult to deal with. Uh, and I'm looking for consistency in our game. Uh, you know, everyone talks about the 60 minute game. Um, I just want consistency in the way that we execute. Uh, I get that there's going to be laps, but when those lapses come back, are we doing what we want to do according to our principles on both sides of the ball? So I'm looking for consistency in our play, consistency in how we prepare uh, and, and practice. Uh, so I'm looking forward to just finding a groove and sticking at it. Excellent answer. And it's fun to get on a, on the call, get on the show with you because I, I do miss the days when we formed the tallest lacrosse broadcasting team in the announcing team in the, uh, in the world uh, back in so doing some MSL games and various things. It was a lot of fun. It's always fun to catch up. So thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, that's great. We just need to move, work with Jake Elliott in on this one somehow too. That would be great. He's, he's, how tall is he? He's a little shorter than you, right? A little bit, but not much. He's a big yeah. fella. Yeah. Well, there you go. Claude Fague. Remember when Claude Fague yes. was the CFM broadcast? That's we were, right. Yeah. Uh, we had some tall groups, but uh, I think you and I were the were the record holders. So I think uh, you're probably right. Get together. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right, lacrosse friends, hope you enjoyed those interviews with Dylan LaPrade with some cool insight into the Arena Lacrosse League East and West and with Dan Ladusser of the New York Riptide who are getting ready to get back on the floor after the COVID-imposed break in the National Lacrosse League schedule. They've been off for a month. They are itching to get going. This episode of The Rundown is a little different. It will be all Ryan Banesh all the time. Banesh, of course, traded earlier this week, just before we were recording, from the Panther City Lacrosse Club to the Albany Firewolves. So, it's all Banesh. First of all, the trade. Section 1 of The Rundown. Who gets what? Albany gets veteran and 1,000-point scorer plus Ryan Banesh. Obviously a boost to their offense. Panther City gets the 21st overall pick in the 2022 draft. That was a comp pick for Stefan LeBlanc that Albany had acquired for the for that free agent signing for him leaving. So they get that. Also a 2023 fourth round pick and lefty forward Johnny Pearson, whose space, whose spot in Albany, Banesh will basically be taking. Spot number two in the rundown, the All Banesh rundown, is why does it work for Albany? Well, they had the assets, they could afford to give those up. They have two other picks in this year's first round before the 21st pick. They have Philadelphia's pick from the Kevin Crowley trade where they got two first rounders, the first of which they used to get Andrew Q. So they're feeling pretty good about that trade at this point. They'll add another first round talent to Andrew Q in that trade. And they have their comp pick for Callum Crawford, the second first rounder they received for the Crawford signing with the Riptide. So they've got some good assets. They could afford to give up the 21 this year. Uh, the fourth rounder, you know, generally not players who are making teams right away. So they're they're okay giving that up. And Johnny Pearson, um, not a big deal for them, I feel, because they've already got Durston, Q, and O'Connor on the left side. Banesh comes in. There really isn't a spot for Johnny Pearson. He's a young, talented guy. He was a 19th overall pick four years ago. He wasn't going to get much opportunity in Albany. Now he goes to Panther City, a young team building where he can get an opportunity. So it makes sense for both teams in that way. Part three of the Albany rundown, why it works for Panther City. They need assets. Albany could spare them. They need assets as an expansion team, a new team building. It's great to have first and second round picks for a team that is in its first, second, third year to add competition, to add depth, to really flesh out a roster with talented players. Um, 
They also, they do get Johnny Pearson, who hasn't had a lot of opportunity. He's only played a handful of games uh, with San Diego his first couple of years. He was drafted by Saskatchewan, never got into the lineup there. So he's bounced around. This will be an opportunity for him to show what he can do on the floor. He'll try and get into some games. Also, the window for Ryan Banesh and Panther City Lacrosse Club don't necessarily align. I mean, Banesh, a veteran player, obviously later in his career, and Panther City, brand new to the league. And Bob Hanley, the GM, talked about how much Banesh brought to the team in a short time. Um, an absolute pro, a great guy to deal with. They feel like he's added a lot already to the franchise. But in terms of really competing for championships, they're pro that it's unlikely for an expansion team to do that right away. Whereas Ryan Banesh, he's ready to go and try and compete and win win a championship. So um, he's he's hoping and Albany are hoping that he will help them do that. Panther City gets some things that are going to help them continue to build their team. We're going to look at the teams that Ryan Banesh has played for as our next point in the rundown, and there's a whole bunch of them. He played a couple of years for the Toronto Rock when he first came into the league. Went to the Edmonton Rush and played for them for a year. Then he spent four years with the Minnesota Swarm. Spent four years with the Buffalo Bandits, which surprised me a bit. It kind of felt like Buffalo was a, a quicker stop, but he was there for quite a while with a you know, very productive team. Then he went to Colorado for a year and a half. He was with Rochester, the old Nighthawks, the original Nighthawks, and then followed, went with them to... Um, Halifax for a year and a half as that was one of the few in-season trades he's had where he went from Colorado to Halifax and then of course Panther City takes him in the expansion draft and now he is going to Albany so so that comes to nine teams if you count Rochester and Halifax as separate teams um, same franchise but of course different teams so uh, that's a lot and an interesting note by Graham Perro leads to our final point in the Benny rundown, which is teams he hasn't played for. And Graham does NLL uh, stat of the day, and he he tweeted out, you know, the teams that ben, Benny has played for and the teams that he hasn't played for or been involved with. There are five of them. There are just five teams in the current NLL that Banesh has not been a part of. The new Philadelphia Wings, the new Rochester Nighthawks, the San Diego Seals, and the New York Riptide, all of whom are only a couple of years old. So limited opportunity. Only one team in the league that's been around for a while that Ryan Banesh has not been part of yet. That's the Calgary Roughnecks. And uh, probably not doesn't bode well for him later in his career, having you know a, a solid job and a new family, the young, uh, the young child in Ontario, probably not going to be going out west, so that may just be the only team that's been around for as long as he has that Banesh doesn't wind up playing for. Never say never, though. And uh, I just think it's uh, it's cool to see Ryan Banesh, the way he's been embraced in Panther City, the way he embraced the town, and was thanking everyone there. And they were, I, you know, I talked to Bob Hamley, and he made it clear that it was really difficult to make that trade. I also talked to Glenn Clark and they were pretty excited about what Brian Banesh brings to the team. Now you've got to see how things will gel. Maybe it takes a bit to figure out roles in Albany, but they were looking for a spark and I think they're going to get that. So pretty cool stuff with Ryan Banesh having moved with so many teams, a real pros pro. Good luck to him. Good luck to everyone involved in that deal. It's fun to break it down a little bit. If you would like to be part of the Lacrosse Link program of the broadcast if you'd like to advertise be a sponsor we are looking we're prepared to have sponsors and advertisers and love to have you on board so you can reach out to me at stamplax at hotmail.com and uh, we can share some information we would love to have you be part of lacrosse link getting the word out to the entire lacrosse community all around the world here at lacrosse link your link to all things lacrosse